Today on this James the Bike Guy, we're checking out a brand new bike from Trek. Something that sprinkled in a bit of their history, as well as a bit of the new craze of down country. That's right, we're checking out the 2022 Trek Top Fuel. And this is the Top Fuel 8 version that we're going to go into the features and designs of. And then finally, we'll find out exactly what it weighs. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button and listen along with me to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. The new Trek Top Fuel is a real step away from the previous Trek Top Fuel. The Top Fuel has been Trek's fastest performance oriented mountain bike for quite some time up until a few years ago when the Trek Super Caliber came out. At that time, the Trek Top Fuel was a 100 millimeter travel XC race bike and today it's grown to be a 120 millimeter travel XC downcountry bike with the geometry to match. Now, the Super Caliber that came in took over the duties of being the most cross country and fastest oriented mountain bike that Trek had. And they did a half change in the 2019 through 21 model year of making their top fuel have a real fast handling frame, but a little bit longer travel up front. And new for 2022, they've really doubled down on this down country phase with slack geometry some performance that's dialed in so that this bike can descend extremely well, but also be a pretty fast rig. To really understand the ethos of the new Trek Top Fuel, I want to start by talking geometry. So as we pull back to check out the bike, you can see it almost looks like a Fuel EX from a few years ago, and that's likely uh, not a mistake. So this bike has definitely got more aggressive in looks and it's gonna have adjustable geometry with a high and a low position. So to go over some geometry, we're looking at a size medium here. This has a 66 degree head tube angle in the lowest position, a seat tube angle effective at 76 degrees, a chainstay length of 435 millimeters and a bottom bracket drop of 36 millimeters. Now it gets a little bit steeper when you put it into high, steepening the seat tube and the head tube angle by 0.4 degrees. And then the bottom bracket drop raises by five millimeters. Now, if we put that into perspective compared to the 2022 Trek Fuel EX, it's bigger and more capable brother. What you'll notice is the head tube angle is actually the same on the Fuel EX. The seat tube angle is about a one degree slacker than what we have here, so this bike should climb a bit better, no surprise. And then the bottom bracket drop, basically how low that BB is in relation to the axles is a bit higher, which should make the handling faster, even though it still has that really slack head tube angle. Now, holding all those angles together is gonna be their Alpha Platinum Aluminum. So the Alpha Platinum Aluminum is a nice lightweight alloy frame you'll see that it's got some smoothed out welds, an inch and an eighth to inch and a half head tube. And one of the things that I think is totally revolutionary for the top fuel in the aluminum format is it's gonna have a swap box compartment. Now these allow you to be able to put in, you know, your tubes, whatever you might want. Bontrager sends over this great little bag to be able to roll everything up in and slide it into the frame. But the part that makes this really unique is it's pretty rare uh, and in fact, I don't think I've seen it before on an aluminum frame. I've always seen these integrated storage on carbon and I think it's really, really awesome to have it on aluminum. Now to make the suspension perform really well in the back is ABP suspension design. And what that is, is basically a concentric bearing that's holding the seat stay as well as the chain stay together through the through axle and you'll notice because the brake is mounted up on the seat stay and everything is rotating on that axis, when you're going down a descent, grabbing the brake, it's not gonna lock up the back end and keep it from being able to compress or what they might call anti-rise. The brake is gonna be totally free. And then the other neat thing is, you'll see that that bearing or the, the pivot, I should say, around that, that through axle going forward, you've got a higher front pivot. This is going to help with some anti-squat characteristics and allow this bike to be super playful while pedaling. And then you'll be able to adjust that geometry by running through your rocker link to your shock and you'll see right there you've got a minnow link adjustment. 
So basically it's in low position now. You can flip that ovalized spacer, which would raise the shock, basically lengthening the seat stay, also changing the geometry of that rocker link. And what that'll mean for the suspension is it's gonna add in a little bit more of that anti-squat. It's gonna make it more responsive while pedaling, but also bring up the bottom bracket, steepen the head tube angle and the seat tube angle to make it climb quite a bit better. Now in the low position like we have here, the bike should be super, super rowdy, especially with those short 435 millimeter chain stays going up through to that 66 degree head tube angle should make it incredibly playful. Now the back end of the bike is 120 millimeters of travel matching up with this 120 millimeter travel RockShox SID. The RockShox SID fork is pretty awesome. I love that RockShox is starting to get their SID in a much more aggressive 34 millimeter stanchion setup. This of course is running their new Rush RL damper. The RL damper is a nice lightweight version, similar to what a charger would do, but much lighter. You're gonna have an open and a locked position. Down below, you do have adjustment for rebound to dial it in faster and slower. And then on the non-drive side, it is of course air adjustable, as well as using their Debon Air air spring. So this means spacers and tokens can go in, so you can dial in the performance, as well as the progressivity of that air shock. The rear shock, we didn't talk about much, but to touch it real quick, is the RockShox Deluxe Ultimate RCT. The RCT is gonna have lots of adjustment to be able to dial it in to the bike. And it's a trunnion mount where the bolts go right into the top of the shock. That allows them to run a longer stroke for the same eye to eye dimension. So this shock comes in at 185 millimeters of overall length with a 50 millimeter shock travel. So that means we've got 120 out back, 120 up front, slack angles and a real playful party of a downcountry bike. Cockpit componentry comes from Trek's in-house brand Bontrager. So here we've got a Bontrager 35 millimeter clamp bar as well as stem. This is from their line series. So an all alloy handlebar. You'll notice the stem is their line elite 35 millimeter stem. I do like how it comes out to these nice lock on grips. It is a plastic collar. So this might be something you'd upgrade into the future, but checking out the saddle and seat post area is of course Bontrager's standard Arvada saddle. And then for a seat post, we've got a Trans X JD YSP 39. Now this is, has a one by style lever on the handlebar that you press and it's gonna raise up the saddle, press it again with your body weight down and it'll compress. And on a size small, it's 100 millimeters of travel, size medium and medium large, it's 150. And then sizes larger than that are 170 millimeters of travel. Diving into the drivetrain, we find a one by 12 system from Shimano. So what that means is we've got only one ring up front and in fact, a 30 tooth chain ring. And then out back, we've got a super wide range, 10 to 51 tooth rear cassette. So this one by style drivetrain gives 510% range and it's operated with a Shimano XT 12 speed rear derailleur. This XT derailleur is the M8100 rear derailleur and it's operating a SLX M7100 cassette driving forward to the SLX M7100 crank set. And this crank set is mounted into the frame with a threaded bottom bracket. Slowing the bike down comes courtesy of some Shimano M6100 brakes. This is the M6100 lever, which closely shares the same lever design with their higher end brakes. And then you can tell the down country features because this has a four piston caliper. This is the M6120 four piston hydraulic caliper clamping down on six bolt rotors. Wheels and tires are pretty sweet running the new XR4 Team Issue tires in these beautiful gum wall setup. I mean, I gotta say the gum walls with that mousseline blue frame are just gorgeous. XR4 is a pretty aggressive tire, especially considering this is a down country bike. But of course it's a 29 by 2.4 width uh, looks awesome on the bike with lots and lots of grip on them. Those tires are of course mounted up on Bontrager's Line Comp 30 rims. These rims are a 30 millimeter wide rim, 29 internal, 
course tubeless ready. And the real party trick here is they come with a rapid drive 54 tooth hub. This hub has 54 teeth of engagement right out of the box, which is a pretty fast engaging hub. Say that would be similar to a higher end DT Swiss hub as far as engagement or even a Hope Pro 4. But for about $30 and on your own, you can upgrade that to be 108 tooth of engagement with just a few parts that's pretty easy to get done. And that's one of the places where I really think Trek does such a good job is specking their bike. Most places, the wheel and tire setup is a place that you might want to upgrade. And in fact, on this bike, I think it's coming out of the box with a really nice setup. That actual weight of the 2022 Trek Top Fuel 8 size medium comes in and weighs 31.62 pounds thanks for watching this video on the 2022 trek top fuel 8. go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below i'd love to find out what you think about this bike what you think of the geometry do you see this bike coming into a place where it's a goldilocks as far as geometry as well as pedaling performance well i don't know but i'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below